Away from the cameras, an accident investigation began immediately by the Portuguese, Canadian, and French transport authorities. Initial checks quickly confirmed that all the fuel tanks of the Airbus were indeed empty. But to lose more than 17 tons of fuel in such a short space of time meant they had a major leak. The question was where? Engineers examined the fuel system searching for faults in the tanks and the fuel lines. It wasn't long before they found what they were looking for, just by the right engine. In this particular case, you had a hydraulic tube that's relatively small by comparison to the larger fuel tube. And the hydraulic tube, due possibly to pulsations in the hydraulic system, were abrading against the larger tube. And eventually the larger tube uh, had a leak in it, and the leak, or not the leak itself, but the, uh, the hole eventually possibly led into a fracture of the tube, allowing this massive fuel flow outside of the engine. The investigators began checking Air Transat maintenance records. They discovered that on the 19th of August, five days before the flight, Air Transat had removed the right-hand engine for maintenance and installed a replacement unit sent by Rolls-Royce. But as they analyzed the repair logs for the engine, they uncovered a shocking mistake. This was not a case of faulty design, but of faulty maintenance. Rolls-Royce had supplied the engine without a hydraulic pump assembly. To overcome this, Transat mechanics had used the parts from an older engine. But they didn't fit properly, and the pipes had been rubbing together for five days. Until midway over the Atlantic, one finally broke. The engine was delivered minus these two tubes and a bracket. That The purpose of that bracket was to maintain adequate clearance. So if they took the bracket off the old engine and put it on the new engine, is that the pipes would be locked together so that they could possibly abrade. As investigators questioned Air Transat mechanics, they found more disturbing evidence of malpractice. The chief mechanic testified that he had been concerned about the substitution of another hydraulic assembly. Five days before the accident, he raised his concerns with his superior. The company decided that the aircraft must go back into service and could not wait for the missing parts. He should go ahead with the substitution. The replacement parts only differed from the correct ones by a few millimeters, but it was a difference that nearly cost 306 lives. A few days after the accident, Air Transat publicly accepted responsibility for the faulty maintenance. We have to realize that there was a small uh, a mistake uh, made uh, in terms of changing the pump. Uh, we installed it, uh, but then uh, some, some, some uh, pipes, uh, so to speak, uh, were needed to be connected to the pump and there was a mismatch. The immediate consequences for Air Transat in that event was that they got to pay a fine of a quarter of a million dollar, which was the highest ever in Canada, for an error that could have been prevented. How someone that is supposed to be qualified in their job can put the wrong part onto an engine and risk 300 people's lives is, is, is beyond me. This incident is a very strong reminder that regulation is important and safety is important and lives will be lost in the absence of that. And they're real lives. It's not just, you know, this imaginary figure in your head of 300 people. It's real people who suffer and continue to suffer. As we all, if it hadn't have been us suffering, it would have been our families. This was by no means the end of the story. Investigators now turned their attention to the cockpit itself. And what role had the crew played in the events of August 24th? Could they have done more to avert the crisis? Key questions remained unanswered.
questions about what happened on the flight deck. The Transport Canada investigation into Air Transat Flight 236 discovered that basic maintenance errors had led to the fuel leak. Air Transat had accepted responsibility and were heavily fined. But the focus now turned on the flight deck and the performance of the crew. What part did they play in the fuel loss? Wing cross feed. On. On. When the crew opened the cross feed valve to transfer fuel from the left wing tank to the right, they lost 17 tons of fuel in less than 30 minutes. Yet they failed to close the cross feed valve and prevent further loss. We have lost both engines due to fuel starvation. We are gliding now. In the days after the incident, Captain Robert Pichet and Dirk de Jager were called before the inquiry and asked in detail about their actions. More than two years later, these findings have still not been published. What follows are possible explanations for the course of events that night, based on known facts and expert opinion. Oil temp low and oil pressure high on number two. The warnings of high oil pressure and low oil temperature from the number two engine on the right wing would not have led the pilots to suspect there was already a major fuel leak. The indications that were being presented uh, with respect to the oil system would probably not give the crew any indications. Uh, um, they may have questioned what was causing uh, the the erroneous or strange indications uh, but uh, there's nothing certainly in in my mind or their training I think that would have uh, triggered them to suspect that uh, you know a fuel system might be involved I bet you it's a computer problem but although the pilots thought they had a computer error the oil warnings were actually correct and were the first indication of a much more serious problem Fuel imbalance warning. I haven't seen that before. When the fuel imbalance warning came up 20 minutes later, showing less fuel in the right wing than the left, it seemed unconnected with the oil alarms. This could have reinforced Captain Pichet's idea that he was facing a series of computer errors. Do not apply this procedure if a fuel leak is suspected. Despite his doubts, Captain Pichet was obliged to follow Airbus procedure to correct the imbalance. He opened the cross feed valve. Wing cross feed. On. But was following the checklist enough? You just can't uh, idly flip switches in response to commands from the computers and anticipate that all will be well at the end of it. You know, once the checklist is complete, uh, we can sit there fat, dumb, and happy. Uh, that's not the case uh, at all. You know, you 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 got to keep second guessing it. You know, is that right? Did we do the right checklist? Have we got the results that we need? Once the pilots calculated the high rate of fuel loss, they should have suspected a fuel leak. Transat 236 Heavy declaring fuel emergency. By the time they had confirmed the leak, their options were.